um, obviously introduce ourselves. I'm Andy Thorne, the, uh, the uh, Sales and Marketing Director of Outstanding Branding. And uh, we're joined today by um, Dorian Tranter um, from our supply partner and a good friend, um, Essential. And we're also joined by a very, very special guest. Um, sustainable clothing uh, was, was a, a topic that we briefly touched on, um, but many, many of you said that you wanted to know more um, and get some great details. So uh, we're joined by a founder of uh, Neutral, um, a clothing brand that uh, has sustainability at its heart, uh, Lars Beck. Um, welcome, Lars. Thank you very much. Um, Lars, um, well, we'll come to you in a minute. Um, DT, um, tell everyone um, a little bit about yourself first. Um, and, uh, and then we'll move to you, Lars, because you're the interesting one. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. <clears throat> Thanks very much for that glowing uh, introduction. Uh, yeah, Doreen Tranter. Uh, I'm the Sales and Marketing Director of Essential Embroidery Supply. I've uh, been in the industry a while, some may say. Um, and, oh, that will change now. Yeah, I see. I'm, I'm going to control, the, uh, control what the people see as well. Nice. Yeah, nice. Right. Um, so, yeah, so I've been in the industry a little while. It's... Um, I think the good thing that one of the things that we've seen change within our industry over the certainly over the last few years is um, the requirement for sustainable, um, eco sustainable, fair trade clothing. We've all been used to buying fair trade bananas or fair trade coffee, or um, but the clothing side has always been something that has been a bit of a mystery uh, until we met Lars. Um, uh, safe to say, I think his 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 story is is better than than uh, than anyone's that we've we've, we've ever uh, experienced in in our trade. Um, so uh, so yeah, I'm 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 excited for you guys to hear it actually. Cool. He's, cool. He's well, without further ado, um, Lars, um, thank you very much for sharing your time. I know obviously it's a strange time for everyone, but you know um, ultimately um, you know. Yeah, you're a busy man. So, look, um, let's find out a bit about you. Mm -hmm. Well, I have time now. I'm sitting at home, like like everybody. <laughs> a lot of people are doing at the moment all over the world. And I'm an old textile guy. I started as a young man. I went uh, to Bangladesh 33 years ago um, and made T-shirts. And I made uh, very fast millions. And when we had to ship containers, I saw people uh, working. Uh, late in the morning, they were tired. Uh, workers' conditions wasn't quite uh, okay, and uh, I went to the dye house uh, to uh, make sure that they hit the right color and made the redying. And I followed the wastewater out to the river, and I, I, I was standing at the riverbanks of Bangladesh, where all the dye houses was. That was easy for them to get rid of of, of uh, the water. And I saw the rivers, you know, uh, black, uh, red, navy, uh, orange, pink, red, red, uh, yellow. Ah, must be red, which is fashion color next year in Europe. And it was, you know. Uh, yeah. So all these things were um, uh, running around my head. Um, um, and, and, and how could we change this? So um, we used a few, uh, used some years to try and make water treatment in Bangladesh, but in the end, it was cheaper not to invest in water treatment. Uh, um, uh, so I, I didn't succeed with that. Then I met um, uh, uh, 16 years ago the first uh, organic people in India making organic cotton, and and everything is cotton. And and uh, I said cotton is cotton, yeah, but you got to do organic cotton. And I said why? Um, and, and I heard the story about how cotton is being grown. Uh, it, it, it used 3,000 liters of water. You keep on spraying the cotton plants with chemicals, insecticides, and pesticides. And after a few weeks uh, in a cotton field, conventional cotton field, uh, uh, everything is dead. There's no worms, there's no microorganisms, uh, and there's no birds because there's nothing to eat. Uh, everything disappears. and, and uh, that's good enough reason uh, uh, for me and uh, because you just keep on spraying it goes into the groundwater everything is killed on the way down to the groundwater and and uh, I understood it's got to be organic cotton and and uh, and also I learned one more thing just to make really uh, why should it be organic you cannot use gene modified seeds 
gene modified seeds are spread all over the world in agriculture, also in the cotton industry. And, 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 and basically, it means that the plant cannot reproduce itself. So you got five. No, just explain what gene modified is, just so everybody knows, because that don't, maybe they don't know the, the, the jargon when you say gene modified. Yeah. Um, well, it's uh, it's uh, uh, you have a seed from a plant, and the whole idea for a plant is to reproduce itself, right? So you have some seeds, and it, it, it it's transported around so it can grow up again somewhere. And then we found out that if we took the reproduction gene away from seeds and put in a uh, 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 and then, uh, then would then if we gave it to the farmers, they had to buy the seeds again and again because it couldn't okay. reproduce itself. And they are forbidden in organic growing uh, cotton farming. And uh, organic cotton farming today is more like you know instead of having one kilometer of of cotton in one direction and five the other uh, kilometers the other direction, um, then you grow like twenty meters and then. Uh, you grow beans, and then you grow 15 meters, and then you grow uh, other crops. And of course, they're not uh, infected uh, by chemicals, spoiled by chemicals and insecticides. So it's much more healthier for the people who grow it. So the farmers can grow food and they can grow uh, uh, cotton at the same time. And uh, we know today that, that a cotton farmer, conventional cotton farmer, uses uh, uh, between 35 and 40 percent of of the selling price of the cotton to buy chemicals and seeds so it's a very very bad business for the farmers and they are going bankrupt i can't hear you now can you hear me sorry what what challenges did you find um of setting up um quite an innovative business before um other people and um, you know, something, something obviously you knew was 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 uh, clothing. But yeah, what challenges did you come across? Well, the challenge was to make a system so that uh, it would be sustainable, so that you had uh, 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 the cotton grown without harming the world, so that you could help the farmer, uh, uh, so that you could uh, treat the wastewater, so you could make sure that the people who are making your garments, they have uh, they are able to buy food and have a place to stay. Give them a fair salary, and uh, the best way to do it was through certifications. I mean, that's the best shot we got. Certifications is great because you have one who makes a standard, and then you have an independent party who checks. So, for the organic cotton, we use guards. For paying the farmer a fair price, we use fair trade, so they get a premium. Um, uh, for the production system with water treatment and using uh, 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 the best uh, uh, and less harmful chemicals, we have EU flour. And, and for uh, 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 the workers, uh, it's under SA8000. Um, that's what we do. That's how we do it. Then we just miss one thing here, and that's the energy, because we've got to have green energy in the production line, right? So. Uh, so we use wind uh, energy. Uh, actually, we produce three times as much green energy as we use through the production chain. So the tough part when we started up was how can we make production run this way? So we had to use a lot of time. Uh, it wasn't that hard to get the organic cotton. It wasn't that hard to get uh, to pay the farmer a premium of of uh, of. Uh, 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 Twenty uh, percent. The, the the tough part was to go through your own production uh, with every detail uh, in in dyeing, in spinning, when you make the thread, in dyeing, in knitting, and at the factory, so that it lives up to to the tough uh, criteria. Uh, that was actually the hard part. So it took uh, it took it took more than a year, and then fifteen years ago we had neutral. Making and that was T-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, polos. Uh, uh, we even made some bags, and and uh, we thought, ah, everybody will buy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, why, why, why did why why didn't everyone not buy though, Lars? You know, that's that's the question. Why why did everyone not buy? Because I I assume it would be because 
sure. all that investment, it, your, your garment has to be more expensive. Sure, because you can have a you can have a t-shirt in the market for for two pounds, and and I mean, uh, if you want to buy a neutral one, it's 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 a double, right, for a t-shirt. Yep. I mean, on polo, it's a little, it's not double up on the fleets. It's not that much more expensive. Um, and these are, are these are compared with the lowest prices from uh, uh, colleagues in the market. And of course, you have the brandings. You have brands who are saying, "Ah, oh, we're so we're so cool, blah blah blah," and we're not more expensive than those guys. And then if you take the sports brands, like you know, uh, the big sports brands, I mean, they're like three times our price. Or four times, or five times, and people do buy them in the business-to-business -business market. So, uh, but 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 the main thing was the price, right? Lars, organic. It's made from organic. They said to me, "Yeah, uh, Lars, do you think I have to eat it or what?" No, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, 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 come back, Lars, when 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 it's the same price, Lars. Let me know. Let me be the first to know, Lars. Let me, that. Let me be the first to know. Well, you know, have a great day, and that's that's how you know. Uh, but that's how um, we we have a saying at Neutral that ignorance is a weapon of mass destruction, <laughs> because nobody knows. I mean, you sit with the final product, and who thinks about the cotton farmer if the land is being spoiled? Who think about the bees and uh, and uh, the animals, the microorganisms in the farmland in, in India? Who thinks about the fishes when you die uh, for a special color or a nice color? Who think about the worker who's been sitting and stitching? I mean, this is just not uh, in, in the society we have. It's all about, you know, uh, I need some t-shirts. Uh, People are measured on what price are they buying it for. I mean, I bought ten thousand T-shirts and I got it. I got it for two pounds each, including a free color break. Bingo! Nice job, you know. We're gonna have, we're gonna have a quick Q and A later, but um, this one's going to be open to both uh, you and DT. Really, um, it's a good question from from Dermot uh, Hessian, and um, you know, his question is is um, how did you convince your customers to pay a premium? So Lars, how did you you convinced DT and DT how did you convince outstanding branding um or was it about convincing you know, was it a natural natural thing that happened from my side it, it, it yeah the it is uh, the 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 garment price is more expensive but actually it, the the story sells itself and as Lars rightly said the 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 genetically modified seed story is a is a horror show an absolute horror show um the the brand the, the domination by these companies that, that actually make these genetically modified seeds um it, it, well, I, there isn't a there isn't a word that can describe it other than a horror show wow. they they i think there's a statistic in large you can you can um you can uh you can correct me if i'm wrong but in in india alone every 30 seconds a, a cotton farmer commits suicide because of the the, the amount of debt that he he or she that they are in to these genetically modified seed companies. That's great. And and the chemical companies. And the chemical companies. But but they're but they're all the same, aren't they? The chemical companies are the, the seed companies that end up that end up owning the cotton farms. Okay, but so but so would you say then that that story that you told to ourselves that we yeah. tell to the Jews, did you think that's the story that you know, or do you think um, that ultimately, big corporations have, have cottoned on to um, the fact. Oh, I think. That, I think there's also yes is the answer, but there's also something um, that Lars does that it, that is um, again is, is phenomenal, which is the SA8000. Right. Um, I know. I don't know if Debbie's listening. Hi, Debbie. If you are, um, well, she's unfortunately can't make it today, but she she oh. moved, made sure that I recorded it so that she's got it later. <laughs> well, hey, anyway, um, they're they're PwC. Um, it was one of the most important things to them when when we sat with them in, in the initial discussions. It was vitally important that 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 that, that the workers' rights were were, were equally as important. Um, and I'm sure Lars can give you a bit more in depth about SE8000 um, in a second because it, it, there aren't that many companies currently within our sector that that. Um, 
how best to get 8,000. And I think, in fact, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, there's only 4,000 companies globally that have the SA8000 um, uh, certification. Yeah. And I think three, three or possibly four within within the promotional world. Oh. Um, you know, and it, it, it's something that protects every, every aspect and every area of of the of um of production um, yeah. and of workers' rights. And and again it's 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 not difficult to sell, Andy. It's not a difficult story to sell. It's a, it's a story that um certainly um got me when when I first met Lars and Tracy and the guys. Um because it it's yeah it, it's a price and, and you know what if it, if prices if if price is an issue then maybe it isn't for you. But if you want to save the world save the planet one t-shirt at a time then neutral is the brand that you need to look to and just just before we come to you Lars and you can talk about you know SA8000 and and you know how you convinced the supply chain to, to start promoting but but DT so you come out on a lot of um visits to our clients you know getting you yeah. in front of them is very very important yeah um, thankfully it's your knowledge not your good looks um, <laughs> <laughs> um we go to the same barber apparently um, yeah no that, that, so but obviously store is one thing but you know all of these people have a budget okay um do you feel that uh, corporations are taking csr you know seriously now because once upon a time it was a box ticket exercise. Yeah. do you actually think you know corporations are taking it seriously or or I, I i think nobody wants that story nobody wants to open the newspaper and read that their brand has bought product or selling products is using products from a sweatshop or you know um anything that that gives them that looks bad to them yeah no definitely definitely um, and from like from from a distributor point of view you know what we noticed was um and this is a question from um uh, uh, nishan um lad um you know he says uh he asks uh, when did you notice know, shift uh, consumers wanting more sustainable clothing and yeah, look, we had the webinar a couple of weeks ago, Louis, and, and we looked at print. And you know, one thing that came out of it was um, you know, not just our customers who are on the webinar. Um, yeah. there, is, there has been a massive shift to sustainable clothing. And not just sustainable clothing, sustainability within promotional products. Because yeah. you know, a lot of them um, have been made in China, one use, and are thrown away. Um, so initially, you know, I'll answer that, that you know, as, a, as an industry, we couldn't keep going on having one use product. Um, we had to not just have product that is usable just because the word sustainability can be a number of things, but where was it coming from? Um, how was the plastics or, or the, the, the material being made? Who was making it? What wages? Yes. And, and so yeah, I'd, I'd say this, certainly this year, very, very importantly, half, last half of last year, definitely. But yeah, this, this year seems to be a big, big focus on it, Nishem. So good question. Um, Lars, right, you're back now. So hold on one moment. Let me just, um, let me just come to you. Uh, we jumped about there a little bit, but um, Lars, if we could, so St. DT uh, mentioned was um, uh, your SA8000, um, which is important, but I'd also like to start with what we mentioned first of all. How did you convince Essential uh, Embroidery to, to start taking your product? And, and, and I can know the story is one thing, but unfortunately, as DT just said, and you said rightly at the beginning, our clients weren't paying the extra. We, we had it when... Uh, eco products were, were were first introduced and everyone loved the idea loved the concept but they weren't going to pay an extra pound for a uh, a recycled plastic 20 coin key you know they can get it for 50p in, in a metal so how did you how did you get that message across and at times didn't you just want to say oh, I, 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 I think I yeah i think we have to go back because uh, when we started up 15 years ago uh, uh <laughs> Our, our main point was, you know, uh, uh, don't pollute uh, 3,000 liters of water with a T-shirt, you know. Don't. Right. You don't have to anymore. Uh, right. Pay the farmer a fair price so he can put his uh, kids to school, right? And and don't spoil his land. Uh, give give the one who have been stitching your clothes, give them a fair price so they yep. can uh, uh, have a place to stay and buy some food. This was how, how we started up. Uh, uh, in the marketing with pictures from uh, from uh, 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 with a, with a with a cotton farmer in front and and uh, um, and and really this didn't work. It took mm. us like five years to find out this this doesn't work. Uh, uh, 
so so back to what's in it for for me the 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 company said what's in it for me well that's why we have on on all our products uh we have tags showing every certificate we do right showing uh that that this makes it a better place for for everybody uh, telling the, the story about that um so that if you are a, a company and you buy a t-shirt or switch from Newport and you give it to uh, your employees, right away they see, wow, this is made right. So the so so when they give it as a gift to the employees or as a gift to uh, to customers, they see, wow, we, we, we are dealing with a company who understands that they want to they want to make a change. They know that. The direction we are heading now is uh, is probably not the, the the right one. We are a company who wants to be here in the future, and that's why we we give you a T-shirt which is uh, made correct. And then and also on the tag, you can read what all the certificates uh, uh, means. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a big uh, uh, that one was a big game changer for us. And then of course you know uh, by keeping on telling the story. Um, um, and it, it more and more people understand that this is uh, this is the way to go. And mm -hmm. in the uh, past uh, ten years, and especially past uh, years, we see the climate change so so deeply. We see uh, we hear the stories from from uh, from people who are having troubles because they're not paid well. Uh, we see uh, this money game in many ways is is. Uh, uh, everything is run by money, and of course that's how it is. But we have to we have to put it in context with sustainability, right? So uh, if so, so you see it right now with with the uh, 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 coronavirus. Boom! The whole world is is, is locked down in uh, in, uh, in in one day or in one week, right? Yes, yeah. We're all sitting here at home. We can't uh, we can't uh, mingle we, we we can't go out uh, we don't know what it is um, but, but this is a crisis that we can fix yeah. it will take a month it will take half a year it will take one year it will take two years but I mean finally we will end up with with some kind of vaccine uh, and now they found out that if you're really getting really they're finding out if the older people stay away from the older people uh, 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 then we get that uh, we have this that can treat it. Uh, uh, when you come into the to to uh, sustainability to climate change, there's no I mean there's no way back. So no. hopefully this crisis will make everybody understand that that you know uh, we only have one planet, right? Let, okay. Let's take care of it. Uh, and I was on that um, you know, certification, um, obviously. Um, you know, there's, there's worldwide uh, sustainability standards. Um, DT's mentioned SA 8000. Yes. Um, so to be, and, and obviously, you know, you promote yourself as, as you know, totally certified, and, and that's that's the USB. I'd really push it out there. Um, what sort of certification does Neutral have? And what is SA 8000? Okay, Let, let's take SA 8000, right? SA 8000 is uh, workers' conditions. Uh, at the spinning mill, at the die house, and in the factory. And what it means is that um, uh, end of the day, uh, in the day, you will have breaks. You will have a, a, a morning break, a lunch break, and an afternoon break. You will have access to water. You will have access to toilet. You will have access, even though your kid is sick, uh, then you will have a kindergarten. Uh, you will have overtime payment. You cannot just work overtime. So you gotta you, you can work maximum eight hours overtime, and you gotta have a fifty percent uh, extra payment uh, on your on your living wage uh, on top of that. So it's all these kind of things that S A eight thousand is uh, handling. And, and what other certification does does uh, Neutral have? Well, Gox is for the organic garden, yep. all right? Fair trade is for giving the farmer a premium uh, 
because who's deciding the cotton price? That's decided at New York Stock Exchange and London Stock Exchange. Do you think it's a high price for cotton? It's not. No. It's always low. And it's so low that it's very difficult to make money for a farmer. So give him a fair price. So uh, he can have another go when climate change, uh, there's no rain this year, then he has enough money uh, and the seeds from last year to get by. Um, uh, EU flour is a dynamic system, so they keep on uh, hiring the bar all the time. Every th third year they hire the bar. Um, they banned metals three years ago. Suddenly you couldn't use metals in the dye stuff. Right. Um, and, and no dye stuff company uh, could, could deliver uh, dye stuff without metals because metals make the color shine. So uh, we were working very hard together with the dye stock, the dye stock company uh, uh, to make dye stock without metal. And that we succeeded with two and a half years ago. And that's interesting because we have had a, a, another message in, uh, Lars, that, that probably answers this question. But um, obviously the question is for, um, you, you know, you talk about dyes. Um, how, does, uh, how do you ensure that the dyes used are environment friendly and both they are, how are they produced? and how their waste from the dyes is disposed of. How is the factory waste water used or reused? Really interesting question. Well, it's uh, uh, if, if we start, I mean, uh, uh, EU flour has uh, the toughest list of them all of what kind of, of uh, 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 ingredients you can put into the dye stuff. And that's the first step. So when you use the dye stuff, it, it, you've got to be able to connect the dye stuff which has not been fixated to the garment, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and and then you recycle the water and use it again. Um, that's in basic uh, our work. Right, right, okay. Um, and, and how do you ensure that the people that you're buying it from, the, the actual companies that are supplying your dyes, how do you ensure that, that they, you know, are they certificated? Is there a certification for that? And, and otherwise, that's how you... Not, otherwise you can't be certified. It's all, the way down. So it's all independently, all independently tested across the board. Excellent. And so, um, but yeah, brilliant. So Vanessa says, thank you very much. That's a great answer. But DT, I'm going to jump right here back to when, when you received, when you received the, the actual garments themselves. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, they're, they're all uh, certified. They've been dyed the right way. Um, and, you know, the client now obviously wants them branded um, and they want them printed and they want, Obviously, you know, to print, you need to use a dye. So, DT, how do you ensure that the dyes you are using are environmentally friendly? And what does Essential do with the inks when it's washed away uh, when you're cleaning screens or, or stuff like that? So, did you want, I think, let me just get touched on it last uh, last time, I believe. Um, we are currently um, printing with water-based inks. Right. So, there's no... Uh, no metals or phthalates within the within the inks that we are using. Yeah. Um, we also within our screen making process within our screen re reclamation reclaiming screens. Yeah. Uh, we also use um, or I think we're the only company in the UK actually using one of these machines that actually nothing goes down the drain. So it's like a big dishwasher for screens. Um, and it, it, it doesn't put anything and any chemicals down the drain. It absolutely absorbs them through, and we and we dispose of them um, right. in a in a uh, environmentally friendly way. Excellent. Excellent. So so basically, from start to, to finish, it, 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 we are protecting the environment. We do know where the waste is going. Yeah. Doing something with it. Excellent. Um, staying with you, obviously, um, you, the other the other thing that people don't think about is obviously packaging. Um, yeah. And, you know, obviously larger clients, you know, if, if you've got a 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 piece order, you yeah, know, a lot of, lot of, lot of plastic. And as we know, uh, bags um, are, are, you know, if they plastic, if it's not, um, if it's just going to be recycled, it will take up to 300 years to, 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 to um, disappear off the planet. Um, yeah. So, what what options are there for for a client to? There's no point in buying a sustainable T-shirt and then and then ruin it by 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 the plastics. Yeah. So we so we're working with a company. We all um, all of our packaging now 
is sugar cane made from sugar cane or sugar cane waste from sugar cane so it's fully recyclable um we believe that it's the best option currently within the marketplace so there's lots of words about biodegradable but as you say andy it's about timing how how when how long does that take um the thing about uh, sugar cane is that it can be it can be recycled with your normal recycling mm. so it, it, it is not it's not single use right it's also carbon negative when it's made and carbon neutral by the time it leaves our factory brilliant brilliant so that's great so i'll finish um last something um something uh, uh vinnie's just asked um and uh, it's interesting because obviously you you're seeing a lot of uh new new stuff happening within the world um as far as sustainability is concerned um, and he's asked, you know, what's the future healthy neutral? Um, are you are you developing garments um, more certification? Yeah, what what's the future health for, for 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 neutral? Well, we we don't make a diff a bigger difference than the number of items we sell. Right. So uh, uh, before the Corona crisis, it was going very well. We were growing at fifty percent a month. Right, so great, you know. Uh, um, so we need to uh, spread it out, uh, spread out our story. Yeah. Um, uh, we are uh, selling it in Europe now, but uh, you, you could imagine that, that we would take other markets as well yeah. uh, in the future. Uh, we believe it should be very, uh, even more open so that um, um, uh, we would go directly and are going directly into farmer's land so that we go into the farmers and make them uh, it takes three years to become organic so in that period of time it's a very difficult time for the farmer because they still sell for conventional price and 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 uh, uh, earth is uh, is uh, there is no more power on earth everything is used so you need to build up the earth again and so so the crops uh, 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 the result from from the field is very low, so they don't have a high income. So we help. Uh, we have in Mahna Pradesh, we have a, 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 a project together with uh, three thousand farmers that that are changing. Uh, take the three years period to become organic, and we buy the cotton that they produce and give them a premium. This is this is what we call tiger cotton. Yeah. Uh, this we don't use in in uh, neutrals in our uh, in our uh, product range uh, uh, because it, it's not organic certified. But we do it as special production for bigger companies, uh, and we even have it on stock, uh, so uh, uh, they can be part of of the Tiger Garden Club together with with uh, with you guys. That's brilliant, absolutely superb. Um, Right, I'm going to um, open it up to everyone else um, uh, and to, to have some, some questions and answers um, because obviously we've got Lars here, um, you know, and um, do, do get some questions in. Um, uh, DT, um, yeah. you, um, you obviously speak to not only ourselves, you sell to, to other, there are other promotional merchandise distributors out there. Um, not outstanding, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, very diplomatic. Um, <laughs> um, what, what, and obviously, you go to see corporations as well. What What would you say that they expect for the future? What What would you think they that they are, they are wanting? Because you know, you mentioned one client, and um, they are you know, they are very very forward thinking and and put themselves under their own targets for it. Um, yeah. But do you see that across the board, and do you see? Lars's ranges of products having to grow um, because of that. I think it's going to become the norm, Andy. Right. I think the requirement now for organic, sustainable uh, products, whether it be a T-shirt, whether it be a, a coffee mug, or or, or whatever it is, it, it is a it's, a it's a serious thing now. And I think the the the, the throwaway landfill, as we used to we used to call it back in the day, um, it has gone. Um, it, I would su suggest that 85% of our quotes we do for clothing always want an eco option. Right. Not saying that they, it always goes for an eco option because price is, is, is still currently 
Um, what do you say the percentages? Well, you know, because say, you know, you know, Lars has found that people are start, he's getting traction, you know, his, his products getting yes. sold. You're still seeing, you know, you're, you're trying to put an income option in uh, because it's been yeah. asked for by ourselves, but people are still saying no because of cost. Yeah. Um, what would you say the percentages? Because again, it's like, are people serious, or do they want want to tick their own tick the box, but aren't willing to pay for it? I, I think I think there's I think there's a there's, there's a there's a stat, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Lars, that only one percent, or still under one percent of the of the current cotton production for garments is organic. Right, correct. It's zero point seven percent actually. Zero point zero point seven. Zero point seven. I mean, it's getting better. Lars, how much, how much how much cotton's produced? Just just to put that into perspective, how much cotton is produced? Holy moly, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, less than one percent. We're not we're not we're not. We're not. Say uh, you know uh, one million uh, ton or ten million ton. I don't know, uh, but it's a lot. It's a it lot. And yeah, I think that the the, the fact that the the fact that everyone needs to focus on is that. Uh, that the cotton that the that the currently that the garment industry is the second largest polluter of our planet wow. after petroleum after the oil companies wow well, well, well again that, that that that's a big message yeah it's a huge message you know, well, well, we, we, we talk about, do you know I mean can i say something you can indeed right, I'll yeah. you're here, mate. We no, can, we, can we, can we all have a, a great responsibility right um i mean when the virus hit, uh, what I like is that I'm in the basic industry. So I have a red t-shirt, right? And a blue t-shirt and a black t-shirt and a red. I have 30 colors in stock, right? If I don't sell it now because it, nobody wants to buy, I will sell it in three months or in half a year or in one year. It's okay. It's still the same shirt, right? The, the, what happens in the textile industry is that everything is driven by fashion. And it's called the, the last 25 years we've made this fast fashion, right? Fast fashion means that you buy a piece of garment, very, very cheap. You pressure through the supply chain. You don't care about the supply chain. You just need a cheap piece of garment to compete with your competitors. And you tell the end user, use it once or twice. It's so cheap then throw it out. So what has happened is that we've gone from 20 pieces of garment 20 years ago, each person in the Western world, to 80 pieces of garment. And the problem is, this is crazy. We, we can't even, I mean, young people go out, they don't know what we are, how, how it's being uh, produced. They just say, okay, I used uh, six pounds on a shirt. And I don't, ah, I didn't like it. I liked it in the shop, but I don't like it now. Or they use it one time on Facebook or where they are. On, on, and, and then ah, I can only wear it once. And then they throw it out. And we cannot recycle it yet. And that's another place where neutral is quite involved is in the recycling business. How can we recycle uh, the used garments? Because now it ends in Africa. Uh, it, on the long field and it takes 100 years where it just lays there and gives co2 uh, release co2 to the atmosphere i mean the way the fashion industry the the way the textile industry is is dealing nowadays is crazy you you then you have problems with with this virus and everything stops right first thing many companies have done is they have rejected and they've stopped all orders in India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, where they are producing. And, you know, uh, some of them are saying, that's your problem. That's a factory's problem. So you've had one big bankruptcy in Bangladesh, for example. Mm. I mean, that's not, that's not, that's not the fair. I mean, in, in the old days, you were producing in, in, uh, in Manchester and, and mm. we were producing in, I'm from Denmark, you know, we had UCA, we had 60,000 stitchers uh, uh, 35 years ago in Denmark. Now we have zero because the idea was we should move it to, to uh, Far East. Then they would get jobs and be well paid and we would get cheap clothing, right? We just for forgot, you know, the well payment of the people and we forget, uh, we forgot to take uh, 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 the responsibility of, of, of taking care of the environment, the pollution. 
Uh, Andy, can I can I jump in? Yes, you can. Yes, you can, mate. There's, um, I think what what might be prudent as well. We can we after this we can post a link. There's a movie uh, uh, called The True Cost, and it it shows you the as last says it talks about fast fashion it shows you the the damage that fast fashion has had on our planet um it's uh it's um it's about an hour long but it's actually a really good uh netflix watch if you want to uh if you've got nothing else to do you might be locked in who knows everybody um, who buys garment should see it right dorian definitely if you at the hundred percent the interesting thing is funny enough um we have had some more questions in and, you know, for instance, uh, Georgia uh, Houston says, um, you know, uh, ethical sustainability products can be difficult to identify. What more can we do um, to educate consumers on how to source and buy ethical products? Either of you, really, because you know, it's a question that, you know, how do we? Um... Well, I think, I, think, I think Neutral do it really, really well. Sorry, Lars, I'll jump in. I think Neutral do it really, really well. They produce a swing ticket. On every single garment that tells you and that this swing ticket is made from uh waste cotton so it's uh it's not cardboard it's it's actually made from as, as, a, as a waste product um it's a it's an amazing swing tag it, it can be we can you can change it to whatever you know Lars they do great work with uh with different brands you can have it branded we do some for for uh, for, uh, for other customers as well okay I'm hoping he's going to fetch when you talk DT, everyone starts going away, mate. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just going to make you start his board. But but it but that, that 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 swing ticket enables you to you can brand it, you can actually, but it has all the details about the garment. And not just that, I mean, while, while Lars is gone, I, I did, you know, uh, George, you know, something that um, Lars has done is actually from a um, from a marketing point of view, um, you know, decent video that that really looks cool. If you watch this. Yeah. Um, oh, here you got it. Is that yeah? That's the tag. That's oh. the tag on every piece of garment, right? Yeah. There you go. Hear you, Andy. Um, this is another way, uh, Georgia. You know, Lars has uh, produced some some decent videos, some really nice shots, uh, lifestyle shots that that again stand out. You know, put put you know, if you're in promotional merchandise or get get that on your website. You know, um, send it out to people. It's nice and short. Um, it, it's really um, really well made um, and, and shows shows I suppose or promotes. You know, our 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 ability and our responsibility as distributors are to to, to get to the end users and educate um as dt says he's got a film to watch and um lars you said you've got something to show us as well um let's have a look well that, that's a t-shirt right it certainly is and here you see the tags we can indeed so the first one is this is okay certified okay we believe in being okay and with the text here with 100% commitment, uh, uh, certified clothing, we can improve our planet, make people healthier, and give farmers hope. That's okay. And then you have the certificates. Brilliant. And that's on every piece of garment. And an explanation. So when you give it away to a customer, they can see, wow, my company thought about what they're doing. And they can be branded as well, Andy. We, we I've seen if I had a brandy one, but they they they'll put your brand on. So if you wanted to, you know, if you if you had enough, you you were doing a run, they would do them branded as well with your actual brand on, which right. is they, they look so good. Um, I think also, Lars, what we haven't touched on um, is that we haven't spoken about your the, the the finer details, the little touches that within within your brand. Um, for example, all the buttons. Sure. Uh, on, Hello shirts are made from pressed cotton. So there's, you know, everything that they, all the labeling is, is, is used from waste cotton. There isn't, there isn't a great deal that isn't, 
you know, isn't okay. Um, no, we've done it for 15 years, right? So we have time to develop and we keep on developing, you know? And, 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 and definitely we are, we are just here. Uh, 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 we, we, I mean, we've been through the hard time, right? The hard time was when you had the product, you thought everybody would buy and nobody wanted to buy, not even, you know, the, 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 the ones that you thought would, would, uh, 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 think this would be uh, obvious for us. Uh, 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 I mean, now uh, we, we now we are in the market. We have a position now as as a very strong brand. Uh, if you want to be sure, because it, uh, of course everybody says it's sustainable now. I remember I went to the shows uh, uh, in the old days before Corona uh, on on the trade fairs uh, this year in. Birmingham, and I was in Milan. I was in Dortmund. I was in uh, Düsseldorf. I was in uh, in Stockholm. Uh, you know, and and what I saw was that all clothing brands were focusing on sustainability. And, and wow, this is great, right? Uh, so you start to ask them, well, what kind of sustainability is it? And that's where they they hold it. That that they installed it, right? Well, we pay. Uh, we have an agreement with the factory that they will pay them a fair salary, right? Uh, we uh, we have asked them for organic cotton, but there again, you gotta go for the certificates. It's the only guarantee you have, and everybody can put it on f fancy uh, tags, right? Yeah. The real proof is inside the garment in the cal label. It's got to be here, and you got to have a number on. Otherwise, you know, it's it doesn't work. Cool, Lars. I've got a few more questions. Um, uh, there's a, this one's actually uh, quite cool from Nishma. Um, he's uh, he's asked. Um, we have a uh, just set up an eco brand, uh, but consumers still look at cheaper options, and we completely believe in sustainability and fair trade. But how can we turn this around apart from using pollutant messages? How, you know, Looking for looking for some advice, Lars. Really, how does how does Nishma, um, you know, get uh, get that message out that it's not about price? Um, well, I think I think uh, it will come. Uh, I think uh, uh, I think you have a different kind of people, right? You have the people who really don't care. I, I, I stopped trying to convince people. Then you have the people who don't, who don't, uh, who, who really, who thinks about what they're doing and wants to do a good thing, but they don't understand what's going on. So that's why I work with, that's why I'm here today. That's why Dorian is uh, amazing. Uh, he knows the story. That's why Andy, now you've, in some, in, this is not the first time you're learning more about garments. 100%. And my, team, my team are in the webinar as well, mate. They're, they're all learning a hell of a lot more. So uh, this is not just about promoting promoting you. This is about our guys getting educated. This is the way we do it, right? Uh, and and uh, uh, of course, the future will be the net. So we have to uh, make more movies, more, more information, uh, more stories. Uh, um, and, uh, the good thing about neutral is that when when you when when we finally get somebody to use neutral, and we do get the biggest companies in Europe now to use neutral, do indeed. Uh, 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 they don't they can't go back. No, 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 no. <laughs> and, and 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 it's not only that it's made right; it's also a wonderful quality. So I mean, yeah, if you you can't you can't take an apple and a banana and say, ah, this is one and this is two. Uh, you can't compare them, so you can't compare a neutral product with with a, 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 a conventional T-shirt. The quality is is outstanding. You love it, and then it becomes your favorite T-shirt, and you wear it all the time. And if uh, Dorian has printed the logo on, then he will wear it ten times more. Then you got ten times more uh, promotion, right? And Definitely. You have a positive feeling about I got it from uh, uh, this this company. Ready. So, so that's the brand of the word you need, lots. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you do a webinar, just say if you've got it from outstanding branding, that's all you need. <laughs> yeah, but, but, uh, uh, 
you know, I just tell the story as it is, right? And what I know. And, 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 um, and, another question. Um, I just don't, don't want to take up too many. Your time as well. But um, are you aware of a particular demographic that buys sustainable clothing? Is this a is this a, a generation uh, Z? Is it is it millennials? Um, is it is it um, Dorian's um, old people that um, you know realise they messed up the world? Um, or is it you know me and you? You know those uh, you know just past the millennial days. Um, I think we would do it, right? Yeah, uh, we don't know. We don't know. I think <laughs> definitely we would do it. I mean. Yeah. Uh, but if you take, there are different categories, right? I yes. mean, now we're talking about the business to business market, right? Yeah. And, and, and if you are a green company and wants to be a green company and wants to be part of the change, it's a very easy way for you to show that you are. Maybe you are uh, producing uh, windmills and are a green company like Vestas, and, and they are using neutral. Um, their problem is that to make the wing swing in a perfect situation, they are using chemicals to to uh, make the wings hold a uh, lot uh, 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 longer. Uh, they are making uh, they are using a lot of chemicals and, and 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 metals in the production of the mill and so on. Uh, they are investing. How can we change each component to being sustainable? Right. And how can we uh, end up with a windmill that we can take down and then we can use the wings again and we can use this again and this again and this again so it will all be standardized, right? But for a quick fix, they can show here's a little t-shirt or and, and, and more and more companies are thinking like that. Um, and I think that's the reason why we are growing uh, 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 a lot. It's really crazy. It's really good. It, it's a, uh, we have we are so happy, you know, because it, we have taken uh, we have you know we bite in the table and we wouldn't let go. Brilliant. Honestly, it's great. Um, just a, another couple, Lars. Um, uh, another one here is: is the garment garment which is uh, sustainably produced um, better quality than a non-sustainably produced garment as a result of the production process? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Because you don't hug the natural fibers with chemical, right. you don't smash them up, right? right. Um, it's very soft. Our, our product is so soft, and 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 that's not. Then you would say, "Wow, you've used a lot of chemical softeners." No, we haven't. We've used organic oils. I mean, it, it's it's actually it's not that difficult. It's right. just I, I'm not a I'm not a technician. I'm not a, 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 a an engineer. I'm just a garment guy, and and I and I think you know well, how can we how can we solve this one? How, this is how we've made uh, 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 and found a lot of solutions uh, like the cotton bottoms, like uh, 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 the softeners, and and uh, uh, and then you've got to believe in it. If you are a manufacturer, I mean, and you want to be sustainable, I think personally that it's very important that that the people you work with. And, and in your supply chain, that they have the same mindset. This is not a jump over game. This is getting into the, the, the core business and find solution. Lars, one, one last question, um, because we're coming up to the end of an hour, our hour. Um, okay. This is from, from, from Vinny, and it's, it's quite an interesting one, actually. Um, uh, from a fashion point of view, um, was there a brand or brands um, who inspired the look of your range? Um, and uh, uh, the designs that you come up with, the cut of the garment, or, or you know, yeah, is is there a brand or brands that, that inspired you? You mean some brands from the market who inspired? Yeah, you? Uh, yeah. Um, fashion, fashion from a fashion point of view, um, you know. From a fashion point of view, no. From from, from from any point of view, then. So, what, what is your well, inspiration? In Switzerland, you had Switzer in the old days, right? Uh, they were. Um, I think they were one of the first guys 20 years ago, 25 years ago in, in Switzerland. And uh, then they had an organic range and they had a fair trade range. Uh, uh, but, but they didn't make it, actually. Uh, mm. uh, they, uh, but, so, so that inspired us to say, hey, it's not OK that one product is organic and, and one product is fair trade and one product you have okay workers conditions all products gotta be you know with everything that the, the, that was the decision we did from the start and and and, and 
And certifications is just so, it's so easy. I mean, you can, you in the split, you see, wow, this is made right, you know. Uh, uh, you don't have to think, you just see it right away. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, Lars, um, thank you very much for your time today. Um, DT, anything else to add um, at, at the end here? Um, yeah, just a quick one. Yes, um, one thing that we haven't um, spoken about is that, that, that Lars has a, a really lovely catalogue with some amazing products in, but that's not that they also have the ability to do bespoke. Right. Okay. So, um, if there's anything, if you if you if you get the catalogue um, and you know it isn't quite your colour or your coloration, then then so they, they can they match and yeah, there is there are bespoke options. Is it is it quite um, a, a large quantity that, that that we need to to be able to do that? Or it's a huge quantity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 800 <laughs> pieces on a polo and, and, and 800 lot. pieces on a hoodie or a sweatshirt. Oh, did you say 300 on a polo? I think I said 800. But, 800. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Sorry to drive it down a bit. <laughs> but but that's, we, not, no, no, we, that's not very good at all. Yeah. Normally it's double up. The, the, the one thing I would also I say, see. Andy, is that the, the customers out there, I mean, to, to get... Have, Get some samples. Have a look at the, have a look at the range. Look at some. Get some. Like I said to Louis last time, and Lars, you have to come to this as well. Everyone that's been on the, the webinar today uh, will receive a um, a a branded um, a neutral uh, t-shirt. Um, if Lars is feeling um, very very um, generous, maybe a polo shirt. Um, I am. Uh, and if he gets drunk this afternoon, maybe a hoodie. I don't know. You collect the right sizes then. So yep. that uh, it's not, you know, uh, here's a polo shirt, you know. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Uh, uh, make sure that it's the right size so they can, so you. Everyone that's been on the uh, webinar last will be getting an email to uh, tell me their you size. You can see our news catalog and there you can see uh, there are uh, very, it's very, it's, it's explained very well how we are producing. And of course you can see everything on neutral.com. Uh, it's very simple. Please talk. Uh, we will help you. I mean, it's not only if you want your own color, it's also if you want your own design or inside or another color or another, you know, we, I think around 30% of our business now is special production. Brilliant. Or Brilliant. if you want to be part of Tiger Cotton, let us know. It's, it's, uh, we just need to uh, do uh, the best we can. And, and, and we love to cooperate with, with, uh, with everybody. Thank you oh. for having me here today. Honestly, Lars, it's been honestly an absolute pleasure. That, that you know, the, the, the learn that we've had today is is amazing. Um, and um, I'm I'm sure the video. I look, a half a dozen to ten of our clients have already requested the video because they couldn't get on the call. Um, and and it'll be on YouTube, it'll be on Face Facebook, and and we, you know, and and it'll be on YouTube, it'll be on Face Facebook, and and we, you know, look, we'd love to have you back as well. To, to, I'd to, love to come back. It, 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 this is a new world. I mean. Why should I take an airplane to London? No need, mate. No need. I mean, no need. We, can, we can get you into our, our clients' clients, you know, boardrooms um, every day of the week. It's, it's a bit, honestly been a pleasure. And DT, thank you as well, mate. Um, uh, we, we, we can do some more. Um, have a great day, everyone. And um, thank you, Lars. Thank you, DT. And uh, that's Sustainable Clothing. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everybody. Ciao.